If you like this video, please subscribe and click that little bell for notifications when we release a new video. Please also consider supporting us on Patreon. We're going to look at lighting stop motion and how it's a lot like lighting on a regular film set. It just has its own set of problems. Oh my god, Maxi, get off my set! Welcome to Pull My Focus, Adventures in the World of Digital Filmmaking, where we give you the inside tips you need to make great video. We've done a couple of videos on lighting tabletop, shooting straight down, product shots and whatnot, but today we're going to do something a little different. We're going to look at uh, lighting a scene, like a stop motion scene. And we're gonna use the same techniques we use on a typical film set. Key light, fill, ambient, backlight, and accent lights. Though I learned a lot on set about lighting, tabletop, and stop motion, initially I learned it at SVA, the School of Visual Arts in New York City. SVA was great because the teachers actually worked in the biz, and my tabletop teacher was a still photographer who specialized in it which was great because these still photographers were some serious experts when it came to lighting tabletop. They would sit there and meticulously uh, light and tweak a shot until it was perfect. The more tabletop I did, the more I realized it was a microcosm for shooting on an actual full-sized set. And it really helped a lot with my lighting because without the need of a big crew and big lights, I could sit there and tweak and practice uh, the usual aspects of lighting, key, fill, contrast, uh, spot, accent lights, all of that. Now it does come with its own issues though. They don't make miniature film lights that spot flood and all that. And that's fine because that's where the creative crafty fun comes in. For most of my lights, I'll be using LED PAR lamps, the standard size and the small accent light with adjustable light sockets that fit on light stands. I like the LED PARs because all of that light is pushed forward. Normally on a daylight interior set with actors, you need to simulate soft daylight coming in through some window off camera. A common setup is a four by four foot diffusion frame with a strong light into it. And then it's boxed in with a whole set of four by four foot solid flags. A lot of lighting is about focusing a light where you want it and then containing the spill of that light. So it's only going where you want it to be. So what I did for our miniature set was recreate that softbox light with this. I took this box from one of my LED bulbs and taped diffusion inside about one third of the way from the front. The portion of the box I would point at my subject on set. This meant the end of the box would help contain my soft light and focus it forward on my subject. I pointed my bulb inside and propped the box up on small wedges. If you need really small wedges, you can take a clothespin apart and use uh, the pieces. I kept the flaps on the end of the box to use as barn doors to help additionally flag the light off of the back wall. For my fill light, that was easy. I used a fill car, just a smaller one, that I taped to a block of wood. Normally our ambient light comes from daylight spill coming uh, into a location, bouncing off the ceilings and the walls. If that's not the case, then we'll add the ambient light with soft lights or, you know, bouncing our own lights off the ceiling. Here, with this miniature set, I'm using a piece of milky white acetate as the roof, and I'm shining a light that I've rigged straight down into it. This gives me my ambient light, and it also uh, gives me a rim and hair light to my subject. I use little pieces of cards on the top 
near the walls just to bring the light level down on the walls or the top a little bit. These are called toppers. Hey, pardon this brief station identification public service announcement, but we would like to let you know that we, Pull My Focus, have been invited to be part of this year's five-day deal video bundle. Now we've made it our mission to help you learn how to make great video and we're not alone. The team at Five Day Deal spend their time finding world-class educators and tools, bundling them together and offering all of it to you at tremendous discounts. The resources come from top brands, successful business owners, and industry experts who really get it. They are very familiar with the challenges video creators face at every stage and have developed the resources to get you to where you want to be faster and with less of a struggle. The 2020 video bundle goes live Thursday, June 11th at 12 p.m. Pacific time and ends June 16th at 12 p.m. Pacific time. Check the description for more info and our link to these awesome deals. Learn from the pros and obtain top resources to become more efficient in your video production. Sometimes a shot needs a spot of light to uh, not focus your attention on something, but just make something pop a little bit, like a picture in the background, a spot on a wall, like, like you see that spot behind me. That's not the sun. It feels like it. That's a light I placed. And I find I want to do that the same with uh, a miniature set. And how do we do that? Mirrors. This is a dental mirror. We used to use these back in the day, but today we have um, all kinds of, you know, little mirrors of various sizes. And, and basically, we shine a, a light into them and focus them on set. And what we do is we'll either use a museum putty or hot glue them to sticks or armature wire. Armature wire is uh, great. It's a soft, malleable metal that's easy to move and bend and then holds its position. And it's used to create the armatures, the skeletons, for stop motion uh, puppets and models. So it's perfect for this use. You shine a light onto them, adjust them, and boom, you've got a little spotlight on your set. As if you used a snooted light with, that could spot and focus. Adjusting them takes a, a little bit of practice because you're not holding the light and pointing it, you're reflecting a light and it gets into the angle of reflectance and all this stuff. I like to use museum putty um, because I can twist the mirror up and down on the armature wire and see where it's shining and then bend the armature wire. It takes a little bit of practice, so don't, don't get frustrated. Um, the only problem with museum putty is it doesn't hold as well as hot glue. If you can, put all your lights on dimmers. It will make your life so much easier making the fine adjustments you need to to adjust the contrast levels, right, between fill and key and ambient and all that on your miniature set. But also be ready to move your lights in closer because in order to uh, get a good depth of field, you're going to need a, a good exposure. Normally, I like shooting at a 5.6 and an f5.6, which I'm shooting at right now. So I'm in focus and the background, as you can see, is just a little soft, but you can distinguish what's there. I, I like that. I feel it feels realistic. But when you're shooting miniatures, you're, they're so close to the lens that you're, you have a much shallower depth of field there. So you can't shoot it at an f6. Here's a shot, a shot at an f11, and that background is very soft. I, too soft for me. Here's an f16. It's a lot better, but it's still a bit soft. You know, it might have made more sense for me to maybe move my set walls a little bit closer um, instead of using the small LED. Use a bigger one. And note that in order to get the F16, I had to bump my ISO from the 850 I like to shoot at to 1600 on the, the Canon C100. Tape everything down. You will be sticking your arms and objects and lights and things into and around your set. And once they're set, you want to tape them down with black paper tape or use museum putty because you are gonna bump into things and it's gonna drive you nuts. It's one of the frustrating things about working on a, on a small tabletop set. Black wrap those lights. 
Black Rap is the other unsung hero of the film set, and it's thick anodized aluminum um, that is used to contain light spill from the edge of lights and whatnot. And here I wrap them around my LED pars so I can just get the light to go where I want it. So wrap those lights to keep the light spill off your set, out of your lens and out of your eyes. So this is one way to look at lighting stop motion uh, and the tips and tricks that go along with it. There's a, a whole bunch more uh, on the subject that would take too long to go into, but I mean, for instance, you can use LED flashlights like I'm doing here, but it takes a little bit extra rigging, also requires uh, some adjustment because I find that a lot of these flashlights are a little too blue. And like here I have a piece of FCTO gel on it. Hope this was helpful. Let me know any questions you have about other issues you have about shooting stop motion or tabletop in the comments below. Don't forget about the five day deal uh, that if you're watching this in June of 2020, um, we're excited to be a part of. Uh, so check that out in the description, the link to that in the description below. Uh, thanks again for watching. Uh, really appreciate it. And now, back to trying to keep my cat off my set.